In this video, let's take a look at an updated injury report for Sunday Night Football against the Tennessee Titans, who could be returning punts this Sunday, a couple of roster transactions that happened, then look at the history of health issues wide receiver Kadarius Tony has struggled with and why it's great that he looks so healthy. But first, how about those? <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Cole and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so make sure to sub if you're new, hit that like button, all that good stuff, and let's get into this video, starting with an injury report covering Chiefs Titans for Sunday Night Football. As far as the Chiefs are concerned, you really only have two guys that we're looking at, three, but he's not a concern for this Sunday, we'll get there. You have tight end Jody Fortson, quad slash illness, he has not participated all week, so he didn't participate Wednesday. He didn't participate Thursday. Then you have linebacker Willie Gay Jr. dealing with a hamstring injury. He was limited on Wednesday, but a full participant today, and I think he should be good and ready to go. Then you have Mike Dana. He's going to be a noticeable return. He's been dealing with a calf injury since week two, I believe, so I like seeing him there. He was a full participant, and I think he's fully healthy and good to go. So you really do love to see that. And then of course, Trent McDuffie is back from IR, full participant all week, definitely gonna be good to go. And the other person that I was talking about, worth keeping tabs on, we just can't do it, is offensive tackle Lucas Niang. He is back, sort of, from the pup list, at least his return window has opened and he's back at practice. So he's got 21 days to either get activated to the roster or go to IR for the season. So while we won't see him on the injury report over here, it's worth continuing to think about, talk about, and bug Andy Reid about. If any of the beat reporters watch my little videos, please ask him every day. Tell him I want to know. <laughs> or not, don't do that, don't do that. And as far as the Titans go, still got a bunch of people on this list. You have Tony Carter, the fullback, Amani Hooker, the safety, Naquan Jones, defensive tackle, Jeffrey Simmons. They did not participate Wednesday, or Thursday. Aaron Brewer, their guard, limited Wednesday, full participant Thursday. Derek Henry, limited with this foot injury, did not participate today due to rest, but he answered this question to reporters and assured them that his feet, both of them, were fine. Is it the same foot? No, Paul, it's the, 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 the foot on my foot, the right or left, the foot is fine. So there you go, he's playing, he's not gonna miss this freaking game, trust me. No team with real injuries ever miss playing the Chiefs. It's freaking crazy, if you ask me. Then you have Sam Okoyananu, the defensive tackle. I tried it today, but I was way wrong. He was limited Wednesday, fully participated today. So he's trending in an upward uh, direction. It looks like you have another defensive tackle, Kevin Strong, limited with this ankle injury, both Wednesday and Thursday. Then you have Ryan Tannehill. Actually, we'll, we'll skip him and get to him last. You have Rashad Weaver, the outside linebacker with this back injury, but full participant all week. Then you have Nate Davis, a guard, and then Pierre Tart, nose tackle, both limited on Thursday. So yeah, we'll see about those guys. I'll get more info tomorrow when I do my Chiefs Titans preview video, but let's talk about Ryan Tannehill. He was limited on Wednesday, did not participate at all today. So that's actually a downward direction for him and his ankle injury. He was in a boot on Sunday at some point. And I don't know if he's still walking around in one by any means, but he's definitely dealing with this ankle injury that's aggravated. He says he's in a lot of pain, but they're being pretty secretive about him. This is what the offensive coordinator said about Ryan Tannehill. He said he's leaving the curtain closed on how Ryan Tannehill looked at practice yesterday, but he's working hard. So basically he's saying, I'm not freaking telling you because we don't want the Chiefs to know if Ryan Tannehill is starting Sunday or Malik Willis. So that's the biggest thing to look for is who the heck is going to be QB on Sunday. We'll keep you updated. Be sure of that. From here, let's talk about special teams and punt returns here for a moment because special teams coordinator Dave Tobe was asked about Sky Moore continuing to return punts. And he said he won't give up on Sky, but there are several guys who can do it. And he didn't specify who, but McCole Hardman. You have the newly signed Smith Marset, who's returned a bunch of punts in college. Then you have the other newly signed receiver, Kadarius Tony. He's been working on that this week, more on that in a bit. So they will continue to work Sky in, build his confidence, and ultimately get him experience under his belt, which Uncle Dave said is the absolute best way to get them better. Real game experience. Hey, are you going to be sticking with Sky more? Uh, he's going to be one of them. We'll see if we start him or not, but uh, he's, he'll, he'll still be in the mix. We're not giving up on him. we got to keep developing him. You know, and I think that's 
you know, part of his hesitation is catching the ball low and getting his eyes up instead of keeping focused on the football. I mean, if you look at his catch, his misses, they all like he, he's got his eyes up and they're low catches, too low. You know, he's not catching the ball high enough. He does a good job in practice with that, but it's the games. So yeah, Sky, you got to quit catching the ball low. Catch it high as a Sky. Dave Tobe isn't going to give up on him, though. He said Sky wants to keep returning punts. He just needs more time learning to catch the ball out of his first name, the Sky. He needs more time, I know, but the team, in my opinion, does not have more time. They need to quit muffing freaking punts and dominate on all three phases of the ball, which is why wide receiver Kadarius Tony could possibly find himself returning punts as early as Sunday. You know, we have three or four guys that can do it. Tony? Yeah, he can do it. Are you planning yeah. to use him Sunday? Maybe. I mean, we got to we got to wait and see. It's uh, coach. Coach wants to get a look at him all week and then make a decision at game time. And it's literally how it's going to go. But I like what I see so far. It looks good. It's a bit early to tell, but we may indeed see this man out there. More on him later. But man, we got to get the punt return thing figured out. That definitely was a large part of why we lost to the Colts uh, week three, whatever that was. Ugly freaking loss. But dude. We got to figure that out. It is a must figure out situation. So hopefully they are on it. Another receiver that I want to talk about. He has a lot of return experience. I thought may help in the return game potentially was the Bears former six round pick from the 2021 NFL draft. Daz Newsome that the Chiefs signed to their practice squad earlier this week. But nah, he's out of here. After like three days, seriously, the Chiefs let him go, uh, but they did add another player in his stead, and that was by adding some depth for the secondary with Rashad Fenton getting traded away to the Falcons. So they brought in defensive back Ugo Hugo Amadi. He was a former fourth round draft pick in the 2019 NFL draft by the Seattle Seahawks, but was traded to the Eagles in August, then 10 days later, traded to the Titans. He played in a couple games for them, suffered an ankle injury, and was released by the Titans on October 31st. Happy freaking Halloween, bud. Charles Goldman of Chiefs Wire has this to say about Amadi. All in all, Amadi has appeared in 49 career NFL games, making 12 career starts. During that span, he's recorded 130 tackles, 6 T4Ls, 1 interception, 2 forced fumbles, 1 fumble recovery, and 13 passes defended. Whoo, what a list. Listed as 5 foot 9 and 201 pounds. What a little man. Amadi is a player with the versatility to play both the safety position and the nickel spot. His skill set is not unlike that of former Chiefs defensive back Tyron Matthew. Well, there you have it. As long as he's the version of Tyron Matthew that will actually tackle people, I like that a lot. I also find it rather convenient <laughs> that the Chiefs are picking up a defensive back who was just released from the team that they are about to play this Sunday, the Titans which is a move the Titans themselves made recently when they signed wide receiver Chris Conley to their 53-man roster. Collusion on both sides of the ball. Okay, probably not, but it is rather ironic. You have to admit it. Admit it right now to my face. Thank you. Again, to recap, wide receiver Daz Newsom is gone. Defensive back Ugo, you go, you, I stay, you go, Amadi is in. But don't forget about the other newly signed receivers as well. Smith, Marset, Kadarius, Tony. Lots of moving parts. Got to keep your eyes open for everything that happens with the practice squad. From here, let's chat a bit more about wide receiver Kadarius Tony because wide receiver coach Joe Blameyer is happy with Tony's progress so far. He's picking everything up. Super good memory retention. We had heard he was smart, and he's demonstrating that classroom side of it. Uh, it's been very impressive, very intelligent. And then now it's just a matter of translating that on the practice field so far. Yesterday was good. It's just a matter of complimenting him in roles with the other guys on the field and in the scheme and against the defense that we're seeing. Why, yes, please compliment this man immediately into the scheme. We would all like that very freaking much. You can see in these clips here from practice on Thursday that it appears Kadarius Tony is indeed healthy. You can see him catching punts, moving quickly left to right, running this route here. Looks like he's out there having fun. Glad to be here in KC, which is freaking great. He looks healthy. He looks good. And the reason why I want to talk about that is because this man has had an unfortunate string of injuries recently and last season, including this offseason. He's actually tweaked his hamstring three times this season already. Not the same one all three times, but still three hamstring tweaks already this year. And because of that, many questioned how effective Tony would be so soon. And the bad string of injury luck could have been one of the reasons why the Giants actually decided to trade Kadarius. Not because he's not healthy now, which is what it looks like, but just because... 
he had trouble getting on the field. So not good, but so far at least he looks good to freaking go and is making some nice cuts all around on the field. Doesn't look hindered at all. So definitely excited about that and hope that he indeed stays healthy because these injuries are starting to pile up just on his previous injury report over the past season and a half or so. He had the three hamstring tweaks this season so far. He had minor knee surgery this offseason and last season dealt with an ankle injury, quad injury, and oblique injury, as well as shoulder injuries in the past. So please, God, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, please help this man to stay healthy. He certainly is now with one of the best medical teams in the entire NFL. So that's a plus. But what do you guys think about Kadarius and his health issues? Do they concern you at all? Are you like me, happy to see him healthy, but praying or thinking happy thoughts that it stays that way? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.